$118,604 is the average salary of a software engineer in 2024. But what do software engineers actually do? And if you're new here, hi, my name is Sajad. I'm a full-time software engineer. I majored in computer science at Georgia Tech. And actually, before I got into this field, this was a big question that I was wondering because software engineering, tech, computer science seemed like a black box. I just pretty much pictured someone sitting behind a screen just coding all day. But little did I know there's so much more to that. And that in this video, I'm going to be breaking down all the responsibilities of a software engineer, why you got into software engineering, and the perks I enjoy as a full-time software engineer. So first, let's talk about the responsibilities of a software engineer. So first thing is, writing code. So yes, as a full-time software engineer or a software engineering intern, you are going to be writing code. Now, what code are you going to be writing? Well, typically it's within the realm of either the front end or the back end or both. Front end is basically everything that's facing the user screen. For example, if you're watching this on youtube.com right now, all the visuals that you're seeing or like, for example, the like button, that was all created by a front end developer. If you haven't hit the like button, there's probably your sign to do that. And even the interaction of you clicking on the like button right now, that mechanism was put into place by a front end engineer. That's front end engineering, everything that's front facing to the user. Back in engineering is everything that happens behind the scenes. So for example, if you hit the like button on this YouTube video, how does YouTube actually know when the next person logs into YouTube to see this video, how do they know to actually increment the like counter and show that it's not one like, but it's two likes now, or it's not 100 likes, it's 200 likes right now. There needs to be some back end system put into place so that everyone can kind of consistently see the same results. One person hitting the like button, it'll show on everyone else's screen. That's pretty much what a back end engineer would do everything behind the scenes. Doing both of them is what a full stack engineer, someone who's well versed in the front end as well as back end engineering. And especially if you're early in your career, I encourage you to try to get exposure to both or become a full stack engineer. The second responsibility of a software engineer is testing the code. So yes, it's really awesome when these companies develop new features. Like if YouTube decides to unleash the love it button instead of a like it button or add in like a new tab, things like that, that would be awesome but they need to test it and make sure it works properly. And specifically within testing, we have this thing called performance scale testing. With YouTube's nearly like 2 billion users, they need to basically simulate different environments. For example, if they're rolling out a new feature of like a heart instead of the like button anymore, maybe they want to test it out with like 200 million impressions or 2 billion different impressions just to make sure that things render properly. You know, when things aren't properly tested, that's when things tend to crash or sometimes you'll see like the buffering continuously happening and that just makes a negative user experience. And so engineers, half of their job is developing, other half or part of the other half is testing. It's actually a huge, huge component that if you don't do right, you could actually potentially get fired because testing proper code coverage is an integral part of being a good software engineer. The third responsibility of a software engineer is maintaining and innovating. So let's talk about innovating first because I think it's a little easier to understand as the world keeps progressing as we go from the year 2023, 2024, 2025, the platforms keep needing to want to improve themselves because sure, YouTube might be doing really good at distributing videos and like giving everyone these like long form videos, but TikTok's on the rise, Instagram's on the rise, Twitter's on the rise. YouTube might be number one right now, but how long are they gonna be number one? Only if they keep improving their own platform. That's why we see changes to the YouTube algorithm. It starts emphasizing watch time over clicks. They start emphasizing actual average view duration instead of just the like counter, which by the way, you should be sticking around for the end and also hitting the like button, appreciate it. But in terms of maintenance, now this is actually a little challenging. So YouTube is a platform that has integrations with other things. There might be certain Chrome extensions. There might be like the Google search kind of coming into play with YouTube search. Now, how does YouTube continue to stay a good platform while being able to integrate all these other things? And once again, as the world is moving into more technological standpoint, this becomes more and more difficult. Right now, YouTube is able to be played on an iPhone. It's be able to play on a Mac screen. It's being able to be played on a TV. But what if there is this brand new device? How will YouTube be able to integrate into that. Well, that's where certain engineers are going to have to come in and be like, all right, so we got to adjust like the dimensions and do this, integrate like these calls to make sure that things are seamless. So that's all part of the, being a software engineer. We want to keep improving, but also making sure our existing thing works while other people are improving and changing different things. So it's our own innovation and dealing with other people's innovations. Number four, design the architecture. 
So as a software engineer, before you write a single line of code, you need to make sure everything is well diagrammed out and everything is able to be conveyed easily in English. Before Java, Python comes English first. So what does that really mean? There might be like this new requirement for you to add this feature to youtube.com. Let's just say instead of the like button, we want to change that to a heart button for people who really, really like this video. Before I write that feature out, I'm going to be like, OK, we need to write out the user scenario. A user will log on to YouTube. A user will click on a video. A user will watch that video. A user will then, if they like that video, click on the heart and then the user will proceed to do whatever. This this way, everyone is on a clear page. Every single engineer, design, product manager on that team is very clear of what the requirements are. There's no confusion. Customers are able to review it and be like, yes, this is the workflow that I want. And then and only then will someone actually be like, OK, this is approved. Let's write the code for it. Prior to that, there's no coding involved. And now this brings an interesting point. When a lot of you will say that software engineers are going to be replaced by AI, good luck designing this architecture and a proper user human workflow, customer workflow by an AI. That sounds pretty difficult to do because software engineering is way more than just writing code. There's all these other components. The next component that I want to talk about is on call support. So on call support, think of you being a 24 seven customer service representative. Let's just say, for example, this video for some reason randomly crashes and videos are just crashing super randomly all across of YouTube. Well, there's definitely going to be some team awake at YouTube, whether it's like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, helping resolve this issue. If there's an issue with Google.com, if there's an issue with Twitter, if there's an issue with any of these tech companies, there is an engineer or a team. They're able to be paged and called at any point and being able to help debug whatever the issue the customer is facing with. Typically, engineers at these tech companies are on call maybe like one or two weeks every couple of months, but it's very team dependent, it's very company dependent, and usually this is the most stressful time of being a software engineer. So those were the responsibilities of a software engineer. Now, I also want to add in something else that makes software engineering so much cooler than like most other industries, and that is the global impact. As a doctor or as a lawyer, you can typically only help one person at a time. As a doctor, you might be able to treat that patient. You might be able to save that patient's lives, but you are fundamentally restricted to that one patient. Or as a lawyer, you might be able to free an innocent person, but you're restricted to helping one person at a time. Me as a full time software engineer sitting in like my office room in just this like random suburb, I can write code that will quite literally have a global impact that will impact customers in Australia in Canada. But if you're curious about like a more in-depth of why I chose this tech field, let me know in the comment section and I'll make a follow-up video. Lastly, I just kind of want to talk about the perks that I enjoy as a full-time software engineer, part of the reason why I got into the field as well. So like I said before, the average salary in America for a software engineer is about $118,000 in 2024. Being a remote software engineer, some perks I enjoy are, for example, a free internet bill, a free cell phone bill because I'm remote and I use those things for work, free gym, free flights of up to $2,000 a year. I get a four 1k match, which for those who don't know, it's basically a retirement fund and which your employers pay into it and just give you that free money. I also have this unique benefit of being able to kind of work wherever and whenever. This last year I visited New York, Austin, Atlanta, and I actually didn't have to take any time off. All I had to do was pull up my laptop, whichever city I was in, and pretty much just work there. And also like flexible work hours as a Muslim having Ramadan, not needing to adjust my work hours, but being able to kind of work whenever I want was super, super helpful. I also enjoy discounts at movie tickets, NBA games, even Broadway shows sometimes, you know, just like the full experience they're trying to give you. And on top of all that, I get a winter break and a summer break. So it's wonderful. And some other big tech companies like Google and Amazon do even more than that. So it's pretty wonderful what these tech companies will do on top of all the like the salary that you're getting. So although the responsibilities, it might be tight, it might be a little hard to become technical to learn about all this coding. The lucrative side of software engineering still exists. You'll get to it eventually and you'll to enjoy the perks as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're interested in a complete beginner's guide into breaking into tech, you might be interested in this video right here.